All right. So uh, this is uh, Intro to 3D Modeling. Uh, I am Cosmos. Um, and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, this is uh, sort of a good primer um, and uh, helps kind of introduce some people who might originally be a little bit daunted by the idea of 3D modeling um, to kind of show them what it takes uh also hello chat hello everyone um <laughs> thank you all so much for showing up um so uh without uh without further ado let's kind of get into things and, and talk about what we're going to be covering today um get me on a uh on a timer here. Uh, this is this is going to be a little quick and dirty uh, in some ways because I'm covering quite a bit in a, in a quite short period of time. Um, so uh, today we will be covering uh, modeling uh, as well as texturing and rigging. Um, so modeling is basically creating your 3D model, um, giving it a shape, geometry, things. Texturing uh, is going to be painting it and coloring it. Um, uh, so if you've seen people do like VR chat, avatar recolors and things like that, um, that's a little bit of what you would need to know to do that with Blender. Um, and then lastly, hopefully if we get time, uh, I'm going to try to do uh, a little bit of, uh, rigging, um, just, just sort of a quick intro to rigging. Um, no, no, no details. And it, I don't know, some of you will, uh, know about weight painting and things like that. We won't be doing any of that, but we'll just use the automatic uh, rigging and blender. Um, other things that we won't really have time to get into today is things like animation and shape keys or blend shapes, um, or details of things like shader settings, lighting, rendering, um, sculpting, normal mapping, some of the more advanced topics. Um, there's some great tutorials and things online for some of these topics if you're interested in them. Um, but yeah. So, uh, yeah, the software we'll be using today is uh, Blender. Um, so Blender is a pretty well-known um, free and open source uh, 3D modeling and 3D graphics uh, suite. Um, and it's been around for several years. I started using it uh, quite a number of years ago, uh, maybe, God, maybe eight years ago now. So I've kind of watched it slowly evolve as they updated it. Um, and they, they've recently released a new update that I'm quite pleased with that has some really great sort of workflow and quality of life features. Um, but uh, yeah. So some kind of basic vocabulary to go over um, that maybe if you're not as familiar with some of these words and what they mean. So a scene, these are the technical meanings of these words in 3D modeling. So a scene is any 3D space filled with objects. Um, so if you're just creating a basic animation, you'll probably only have one scene. Whereas if you're creating like a 3d movie with multiple scenes, you'll have to manage different scenes, um, different setups of 3d objects in your world. Uh, an object specifically is, is anything which has position and orientation in the world. Um, so that can be something like, a, a, either a, a model or a lamp or a camera or something like that. Um, so the origin is the reference point or center of an object. Um, so it's sort of the zero, zero, zero point where you measure all the geometry from. Um, a mesh is uh, the surface that defines a 3D model. So um, the object is the actual like location of where it is. And then um, most of the time it'll have a mesh that's associated with it. Um, and so it's a, uh, Unlike some kinds of 3D modeling like I do for my engineering career, um, it's not considered solid. It's just sort of like a, a hollow skin, um, but graphically it looks solid. Um, and then a gizmo. Um, I won't be using a lot of gizmos today because I tend to use a lot of hotkeys when I work, um, but you'll see them in things like Unity. They're, they're on by default. It's just one of those grabbable things you grab with the arrows um, or little boxes or rings or something that you can use to move, rotate scale, stuff like that. Um, and then if you, if, whenever I talk about like parent child or like parenting something or like a parent, and it's children, um, not talking about an actual, uh, family, uh, with parents, but, uh, it essentially means that you've attached, uh, the child object to the parent object. And anytime the parent object moves, the child 
with it sort of stuck onto the surface. Um, in technical terms, it just means that you're measuring the position of the child relative to the parent. Um, so the, the only time that'll come into play is when, when I talk about rigging later, um, because each, each element of the rig, as you go up the chain will be a child of the next one. Um, so yeah, so, uh, in more detail about meshes. So a mesh has sort of three basic fundamental elements. Um, one of them is a, a, a vertex, um, I, I hear some people call it a vertice. That's a little bit of a pet peeve of mine. <laughs> the correct term is vertex. Um, so we, we see here before us a singular uh, vertex. Um, and then if you uh, ex do what's called extruding, uh, you can sort of copy and connect that vertex over and you'll make an edge. Um, and then lastly, if you extrude an edge or if you, if you select a bunch of vertices and um, hit the, use the fill key on them, it'll fill them into a face. Um, and so these are just kind of the three elements you'll be working directly with when you're doing mesh modeling. Um, and uh, in Blender, there's ways to, to kind of quickly switch between vertex mode if you want, vert like if you care about vertices or edge mode, if you care about edges or face mode, et cetera. Um, so some of the hotkeys I'll be using today, you'll see when I move to Blender, I have a little hotkey indicator in the corner. Um, so if you're a little bit confused as to what hotkeys I'm using as I'm working on things, um, hopefully that will be helpful. Um, you'll see me hit G a lot because G is um, the move key. If, I, if I've got something selected, that'll move it around. Um, and then S uh, scales or sizes things, uh, rotate, E uh, extrudes. And so extruding, if you're not really familiar with what that means, it'll make more sense when I get into modeling. Um, and then F fills, uh, it'll do different things depending on sort of how much geometry you have selected, but it essentially it'll fill in an edge or a face. Um, and then X is delete if you want to get rid of something. And then, um, any of those first four, you can follow up with either the X, Y, or Z keys. Um, and that'll just tell it if you want to stick to a particular direction, either X direction, Y direction, or Z direction. Um, and there's a little indicator up in the corner of Blender um, that'll show that. Um, some more useful hotkeys, tab, if you're trying to edit an object, um, that'll take you into mode where you can edit the mesh. Um, a will select or deselect everything, um, pretty useful. Z will toggle, will, uh, toggle you into wireframe. Um, it, it's, a, allow, it's to allow you to see through things, which can be helpful when you're modeling. Um, and then a few other ones that I use sometimes are alt click, which will select an entire edge loop. Um, and then alt M, which will take several vertices and merge them together into one sort of pinch and connect them into one. So if you, it's useful if you're like closing off a tube type shape or something. Um, and then control R is ring cut, which I'll use early on. Um, and that's sort of, it's hard, a little bit hard to explain uh, with words, but it, it'll make sense once I use it. Um, so I'll, t I'll do a little modeling demo. I'll be modeling a character today. I'll be using a reference image that I drew earlier. Um, I find that modeling from a reference image is much easier than trying to model freehand. Um, I, 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 there may be people out there who can just open up Blender and make a nice looking model without any kind of reference. Um, I am not one of those people. So <laughs> we will be using a reference image and I'll show you how to set all that up. Um, so uh, here's Blender. Uh, this is the, I'm working with the most recent version. Uh, so when you open up Blender, this is what you'll see. Uh, this is the default cube here. Um, and I'm using to, to rotate and orbit around, I'm using my middle mouse button. So it's, it's really important if, to get a, a mouse with a middle click button if you're gonna be doing any kind of modeling. Um, and then shift, I'm holding shift, middle mouse button to pan around like that. So most of the time when I'm just doing that, I got shift, middle mouse button, shift, middle mouse button, pan, orbit, pan, orbit, like that. Just a, a way to navigate. Um, I think it's pretty similar in Unity as well. But um, so I'm, as I said, I'm gonna work with a, a background image. So um, I'm gonna go up into the corner here and I can do add. Um, and I'm going to add an image and I'm gonna say background. Um, and so we're gonna grab that. Uh, I wanna actually, let me make sure that uh, 
really think it's a, it's opening up a new window that I might have to have OBS grab here, but um, I'm going to add a uh, image, or let me switch it to perspective, okay. So this this will be the, fr we'll call this the front of our model. So right here, we'll, we'll switch it to perspective or to orthographic, which is better if you're using images. So then we'll do add image background, um, and then it'll open up. It's I've got a browser opened up that you can't see, but it's just it it's just your computer's files. You'll select the image you want to use, um, and so here's the background image we're going to use. Um, let me uh, I'm going to hit Z wireframe. Let's me see through things. So here's the reference image we're going to be using today um, that I drew. So just select that and I'm going to drag it and make sure it's centered. Um, you want to make sure if you're using, if you're going to make your own reference image, that everything lines up as indicated with those arrows there. Um, but yes, this is our kitty that we're going to be modeling. So I've, I've got this in the front view. Again, I've switched it to orthographic, which is the, the non-perspective view. So, um, I've got that view of our model that we're going to be making lined up. Um, and then I'm going to orbit around to this side and then I'm going to switch it back to orthographic, and then I'm going to hit alt. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's not showing me hitting alt, but um, alt essentially snaps you to that view. Um, or there's some other view tools you can use, whatever you prefer. Um, and so now we're going to add Im image again, background, 3D cat. It's important not to resize these images because you want the size um, on the front view and the uh, right hand view to match up. Um, so we're going to line that up just like so there. Um, and so now if I go to perspective, we got both our both our reference images there ready to go. Um, and so I'm going to start probably working in the, the front view. Um, so I'm going to hit Z again. Uh, switch it back to solid view. So I'm gonna get. I'm gonna be working uh, with this cube as my base. Um, you can add geometry from basically from nothing, um, but it's sometimes it's nice to have a a uh, something to work with as your sort of starting base. So I'm gonna hit tab. Tab will bring me into edit mode. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit Control R. So as you see down in the corner, that'll give me a ring cut. Um, and that allows me to s essentially ring, do a ring around my model, slice it in half like that, and then it'll let me slide it. Um, and then if I right click, that'll just place it right in the middle there. Um, and so we've got our cube sort of sliced in half here. Um, and so what we're going to be doing is today is going to be perfectly symmetrical. So there's a really nice way to do symmetrical modeling. Uh, using something called a mirror modifier. Um, and so I'm going to click on, hold shift, click on each of these vertices for multi-select. Um, and I'm going to hit X, um, delete vertices, and that'll delete half of my cube here. So now half my cube is missing. Um, and then I'm going to go down to this little gear menu here. This is where your modifiers live. And I'm going to do, I'm going to add a modifier up at the top, and I'm going to go to... Uh, mirror which is right here I'm do that on the you can select your axis here so I'm, I'm doing it on the y axis so it'll if you got that matched up so now it's mirroring my half of my cube over um, and if I select if I hit G and grab select now my cube is symmetrical and it will stay that way um, and so I'm going to just for the purposes of this model, I'm, I need to do another ring cut because I need to I need to pull the leg out from there. So I'm going to do Control R ring cut like that. Um, but yeah, actually, let me make sure I'm recording because I know some of you may want to watch this back later. So we're now recording. Um, I can. Uh, because things are going to get a little a little more technical, and, and uh, I've got 
gonna <laughs> gonna get working pretty fast here. So um, yeah, and there there also will be the Twitch recording. So um, yeah, whatever works best for you. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm going to select these vertices here. Hold Shift, select these. Then I'm gonna hit G for grab, and then I'm gonna hit Y. And G, Y will allow me to grab along the Y axis like that. So I'm grabbing along Y. Y axis is the green axis. I'm gonna pull it out a little bit like that. And then I wanna grab, now I wanna adjust the size of my geometry so it sort of fits in my avatar stomach because I'm or in my, my model stomach. So I'm gonna be uh, working from the stomach outward and sort of building it out. So now that I've got this sort of basic cube set up ready to go and I have my mirror modifier turned on, uh, I'm gonna hit A and A will select all. Um, and that uh, that allows me to um, grab sort of all of the geometry at once here. But um, I know I'm using a lot of hotkeys. I do just kind of briefly want to show how you, if, if you're, the hotkeys are a little bit much. Um, can do so up here in the in the corner is my gizmo menu um, and the gizmo menu I can turn on uh, global move and so this is kind of a common gizmo you'll see um, and so I can this I can just grab it and move it a lot that so if you're just starting out with blender um, you may turn on uh, some of these gizmos and that gizmo menu up there just to help you out. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and leave gizmos on or leave the gizmo on just, uh, so you, you'll know that it, instead of using the, the hotkeys and things, you can always just grab it and move it like that. Um, yeah, I'm not sure whether they're on by default. Um, I, I, maybe in the new version of Blender they're not, but... Um, yeah, if they're, if it, they may be on, um, but if they're not, you can always go up to your gizmo menu over here and turn on, um, your object move gizmos. Basically there's other ones for rotate and scale as well, if you need to be doing that. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna, again, hold alt snap at my view here. So in my, my mirror modifier, um, I am going to be. Uh, I, there's a few options I want to turn on here. So merge will basically make it so that anything that touches the center of the mirror will like get fused together, which I want to happen. Um, and then clipping will stop anything from crossing the mirror axis, basically. Um, so I want to make sure merge and clipping are on. So I'm going to drag that here. And now when it hits the center, it'll, it'll fuse together and, and not cross the boundary. So, um, yeah. So I'm going to switch back to orthographic there, hold alt and take me my, my view flat here. Um, so I'm going to hit S for scale. S will resize my thing down like that. G for grab, pull it in here, zoom in a little bit. Um, and again, to, to, to pan around like that, I'm just holding shift middle mouse button. Um, cause if I just drag the middle mouse button, normally I'll, I'll orbit away like that. So again, orthographic alt. So yeah, so I'm going to grab scale, scale like that. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start um, actually bring it down a little bit, select the bottom. Um, you can also hit numpad five to switch back to that, like flat view instead of, but you, instead of clicking that, but clicking this works. Um, and then again, I'm going to hold alt, um, to get myself flat there. So I'll just hit G, bring that down a little bit. Um, so yeah. And these, these are things, I mean, it may seem complicated and daunting at first, um, especially using all these hotkeys. And it's it's a little bit hard for me to teach uh, knowing that I've done modeling for a while. Um, 
in in blender there's there's always more than one way to do something um so if you don't again like if you don't like using the hotkeys you can always turn on the gizmos and drag it with the little arrows and things um and i think there's some view options you can look at for getting into these views if you're if you're not comfortable like holding alt or something but um yeah so bring that down there form kind of the pelvis shape um and so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go up here so uh, from our discussion earlier about uh faces uh ver vertex edge and face um so we, we're right there you see the little vertex icon we're in vertex mode so i can also do edge mode for edges and face mode for faces so we're going to live in face mode for a little bit um and so now when i select i'm selecting faces um and so we're about to use a really powerful tool for 3d modeling called extrusion um, and extrusion um you, there's there's some tool tools along here that you can click um and if you're not used to using the hotkeys for these things so like there's a for the ring cut where I, that i did earlier in the the demo um there's a button for that um and so um in in our mode here in we're in layout mode modeling mode you'll get those same ones but um yeah you there's a way to do everything with buttons if you're not comfortable with the hotkeys but uh yeah so i'm gonna hit i've got out of edit mode here I, i'm in object mode so it's not letting me edit it so i'm gonna hit tab again that'll bring me into edit mode um so yeah so we're, we're gonna play with extrusion now so i'm gonna hit the button to bring myself back into flat or orth or orthographic view and now i'm going to hit e and e will pull out some geometry like that um it'll make a copy of whatever i've selected that's, that's connected back so i'm going to pull down the legs like that i'm going to here g for grab pull down like that so yeah e E, G, S, and R are like my most commonly used hotkeys. Extrude, grab, scale, rotate. Um, you can work quite quickly uh, using those keys. So E, like that. And then I'm going to hit S for scale, because as you see, it's a little too big for the ankle there. Um, so yeah, so again, we're extruding uh, with the E key. Um, and again, you can use that extrude button as well. So we're pulling it down. Um, and then I guess just for fun, I'm going to scale it with the gizmo. Um, so I'm going to go to my gizmo menu here, uh, scale. So now I get those little scale boxes, the squarey tips on there, scale it down like that. So if you're more comfortable scaling things like that, you can always just turn that on. Um, yeah, again, sorry, I'm seeing the chat there. Sorry if I'm going a little quick here. Um, I, I This is a little bit of an a, ambitious effort in terms of uh, what I'm trying to teach here. But again, it will be recorded. So you can go back and, and just sort of watch watch what you missed. Um, and uh, yeah, so scale that a little bit, G. Um, and you'll see my hotkeys over the, in the corner here uh, that I'm... I'm moving here, so scale, G. And now I'm gonna extrude again, E, pull out a little bit like that. Um, so that we'll form the pause. Um, and then we'll, we gotta select our faces on top here now. So multi-select the faces. Um, so, and then switch back to our flat view again. Um, and so then I'm going to extrude with E again, pull it up, and extrude again up, grab it over, extrude up, extrude up, grab it over. You'll watch my hotkeys as they're, they're going here. Um, extrude up. Scale it down, grab it over, extrude up, 
scale it up a little bit for the head, grab it, extrude, scale, extrude, scale. We've got sort of a basic head uh, formed here. So um, yeah, we've got our sort of the basic start to our geometry. Um, and now I'm going to pull over, select the uh, side here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull out their arm. Uh, and so I'll hit, go back into my flat view here. Um, Alt snaps. Um, so yeah, extrude. Like that. Now we see we're pulling it out. S scale. Extrude. S scale. Extrude. Scale. Extrude. Scale. Extrude. Scale. So, so you see that that sort of quick combination of extrude scale. Um, you'll be able to pull some geometry at uh, really fast. And yes, I am thinking about making this a public VR chat avatar. It's it won't be my best work because I'm working sort of quick and dirty here, as I said. But yeah, I think. Uh, I, I, I think this would be sort of fun to, to give this, have people running around, kind of like the badgy invasion, have the invasion of this little kitty. Um, but yeah, so um, as I've sort of been extruding and grabbing and scaling and extruding and grabbing and scaling off of faces, I've sort of built out this figure here. Um, and so you may be saying to yourself, well, Cosmos, this isn't a very good looking 3D model. This looks like some crappy thing cut out of wood. Um, and you would be right. Uh, sort of like woodworking, um, there are some tricks in 3D modeling where you could start with sort of a rough shape that doesn't look particularly good. Um, and then sort of further refine it. So now that we've got uh, the basic shape, um, actually, let me let me give him some toesies here. Uh, hit E again. There we go. Now we got toesies. Um, so we got sort of the basic shape of our model built out. Um, it's been mirrored over, and so now I'm about to do something that may initially appear as magic, um, but it's actually just Blender, uh, <laughs> and that's that's called the subdivision surface modifier. Long name, I know. Um, if you have to look it up, I don't blame you. Uh, but so same place that we applied our mirror modifier from earlier, um, that allows us to mirror our mesh over. Um, we're going to go back into our modifiers. So we're going to hit add modifier and I'm going to add this, this super crazy modifier called subdivision surface. And what that does is it's going to do that. It's going to take this sort of basic rough model that I've made. Um, and it's going to refine it, uh, and it's going to smooth it out a little bit. Um, and a nice thing about this is we actually still have uh, the geometry here, so we can actually still select all that basic rough geometry that we had made um, and drag it around. So if I if I hit G, grab, grab that over, it'll adjust and pull over like that. And I think this is almost almost like magic. You can you can really work on your model uh, undo that. Um, you can really work on your model like this and in a nice way that feels almost like sculpting clay. Um, so at this point, I, I'm just gonna be, I'm gonna put it back into vertex mode because that makes a lot of sense for me, I think. And I'm just gonna be sort of lining up I'm going to work fairly quickly here because I am pressed for time. Um, but essentially what I'm going to be doing is is using the same select, grab, select, grab things that I was doing earlier. Um, I'm just going to line up uh, the profile of my model a little better with the reference image. So go back to the reference image like that. Just try to get it a little better lined up, grab it, so that it's not as ugly. So yeah, sort of sticking to my mirror, mirror modifier a little bit, but um, 
Yeah. Um, so this will give us kind of our basic humanoid shape here. Um, pull that out a little bit. I, I, I don't want to take too much time refining this. I may have to just kind of stick with the, the rough boundary outline here. But as you can see, uh, you can grab these, these individual vertices here and just kind of adjust your model and make it make it to where it, it looks appropriate. Um, and it, I mean, it is, it is sort of an art form. I can, I can, I can teach the technical side of it, but I can't make one good at, at 3d modeling. So it will take a little bit of practice. Um, but yes. So now I'm going to switch over to my other view here. Um, I'm going to switch to wireframe, make it transparent. Um, Okay. It's my alarm going off telling me it's half time. <laughs> um, but yes, so I'm going to select. Uh, now that now when I select objects, I can select them through. So I'm going to hit uh, select all, grab it over, line it up. Um, and so if I switch, if I hold on this and uh, I can pull out my circle select mode and that allows me to just sort of grab anything that lies under that. Um, and when it's transparent, you can select anything that lies under your cursor, which I'm, I don't want to select just one. I want to select all of them that lie underneath so that I can adjust them. So I'll keep selecting, grabbing, scaling, selecting, grabbing, scaling um, with my, with my hotkeys here. Um, so I'm just going to bring the profile of the model out, um, just a little more in line with, uh, with my reference image here. Um, again, working real, real quick and dirty here. Um, but yeah. Okay. Bring the head out a little bit. So now I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get something that roughly lines up and looks more than, like more than just a bunch of boxes. Uh, so, yeah. So now I've got my, I've got sort of a rough shape worked out. Um, and so I don't really, I, I think I'm done working with this, uh, this sort of rough shape that I've, I've hewn out here. Um, and I want to work a little more in detail with the geometry um, to, to refine it a little bit more because it's still, it's, it's, it's looking okay, but it's still a pretty rough shape. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, I'm going to keep my mirror modifier on because I still want that symmetry, but I'm going to go down to that subdivision surface modifier um, from earlier. Here it is. And I'm going to hit apply. Uh, whoops, I have to exit edit mode first. So I'm going to hit tab to get out of edit mode. It'll warn you. It says modifiers cannot be applied in edit mode. Um, so I'll apply the modifier. Um, tab back into edit mode. Um, and now I've got all this geometry here that I can actually grab and work with. So, um, I'm going to hit, I'm going to make my view, uh, more solid now. I, 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 I'll just use a hotkey. I'm sure there's somewhere in the menu you can do it, but I'm just going to hit Z, um, solid. So that'll bring us solid view again. Um. So yeah. Um, so there's a there's another nifty little tool uh, that's going to come in handy here, um, and it's called proportional falloff editing. Um, and what propor proportional falloff editing does is rather than just selecting a single vertex and grabbing it like that, and and moving it around. Um, proportional falloff will sort of tug other vertices with it. Um, and it's, it's a much, instead of like individually adjusting every little vertex to like the spot that it's gotta be on the model, um, which would take forever. Um, you can use this proportional editing trick, uh, to adjust, uh, 
just things. So um, it's it's a little hard to find, um, but it's it lives right up here. There's proportional editing, so I'm gonna I'm gonna click that little radio button on, turn on proportional editing. Um, and so now when I hit my G key, my my G for grab, as you'll see, it pulls everything along with it. So I got this sort of wiggly wobbly effect. Um, so if I if I were to pull the arm up, the whole arm would go up like that. Um, so it's it's almost more like editing clay or something. Um, because while you can, I mean, this is this is like quick modeling here. While you can extrude and grab and extrude and like extrude, grab, scale every little individual vertex, um, it takes forever and it's a lot faster to model like this. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna switch my select mode back to the normal like small select mode. Um, and so as I scroll my wheel, this is just like a brush size that you might get in like Photoshop or something. This is going to be like the size of my proportional editing. So if I bring it down real small, it's not going to have that much influence versus if I scroll down and bring it larger, it'll have much more. Um, and so that'll allow me to really fine tune how I adjust this model. So if I want to bring the back out a little bit, I can bring it down to like that, pull the back out a bit. Um, so yeah, I'll, um, I won't spend too much time tweaking this model just cause I do have some other things I want to cover in the next half hour or so. Um, but hopefully this kind of gives you an intro and in, into a really nice and really quick way to model things in 3d, um, using a, a mirror or symmetry modifier subdivision surface to, uh, take your boxy geometry and bring it down nice. And then um, this proportional fall off editing up here turned on to sculpt it a little better. So if I go back to my reference image, I can adjust and tweak. And um, if, if I was making this model for someone uh, that I cared about dearly, I would spend much more time than I'm about to uh, making it, tweaking it, making it look just right, um, fitting the reference and things. Uh, but I won't do that. I'll just, I'll just kind of roughly leave the head that way, um, pull out the, the snoot a little bit um, like that. And so it's, uh, this is just, you know, if you've ever sculpted anything out of clay before, it's a bit like sculpting um, just on a computer. Um, so yeah, I think, I'll, I think I'll give some ears real quick and then we'll, we'll call it good. I'm gonna extrude E, bring it up. Um, Switch back to vertex mode. Uh, pull the back of the ears out a little bit. Oh, turn that down. Pull the back of the ears out. Select the top of the ears. Pull them up like that. Scale it down a little bit. Uh, and now our model's got ears. Um, and so there's, uh, before I switch over to the other topics, um, because I knew we we're getting pressed for time here. Um, I'll, uh, I'll give him a tail real quick because it's this is a furry character. It needs a tail. Um, so there's the you can either use the add menu here or you can do shift A. Um, but if I can add, add a circle to start the tail with. Um, and so in my little add circle menu here that pops up, I can kind of select what I got. Um, uh, it, this is the, for the, the, the deal to detail that I'm working at. This is a little too much. So I'll give it maybe 16 vertices um, and hit enter and call that good. Uh, select all of them. Uh, so now I'm gonna grab it, or no, we're gonna grab it along Z. We're gonna rotate it around the, rotate it around the Y axis, R, Y. Scale it down, rotate. Um, and now I'm still working with my mirror modifier here. So you'll see it's actually sticking to the middle. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna delete these vertices in the middle so that it plays nice with the mirror modifier. Um, bring that there, select all these, bring it in. Um, wireframe, you can see through it. Okay, 
So now we're, we got the basis for our tail here. So we're going to go like that, scale it down, bring it in. You'll see my hotkeys just flying up in the corner, but you, you'll see they're mostly just GS and R. <laughs> um, grab scale and rotate. Um, scale it down a little bit, bring it in. Uh, so now, so, and this is a, this is something that actually took me a long time to learn when I was first 3d modeling. Um, it, you don't actually always have to have your 3d model like connected to itself. I mean, the term for that is manifold, but essentially like you don't have to like, I, I would try to like drag the tail out of that and like somehow make the tail connected to the body. But, um, if it suits you, you can actually just, uh, take your geometry like that and just sort of stick new geometry in and just make it stick out. Um, because ultimately all you really care about is how it looks. No one's going to see inside the model. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to hit E actually let me bring it into my flat view mode here, but E for extrude, E for extrude, E for extrude, R for rotate, E for extrude, R for rotate, E for extrude, R for rotate. Um, e for extrude and then I'm going to hit I, I, meant, I think that I mentioned the alt M keyboard shortcut is useful for closing up tubes I'm going to hit alt M alt plus M uh, and just merge at center that'll just kind of close off my bring it there so it sticks that'll kind of close off my, my little tube of a tail here um so, ta-da, we've now got a, uh, bring it to solid, we've now got sort of a workable model here. Um, again, I said this was going to be quick and dirty, it's not my best work. Uh, but I, hopefully you get the idea of what it takes to model something. Um, so, this, this kind of ends the modeling part of things. So, just real quickly, um, talk about materials and textures. Um, so, right now our model was just, you know, it's just this gray blob. Um, so, uh, materials are things you apply to objects, um, that give them a look and feel. Um, and so I know some, some of you may want to know how to like paint, uh, VR chat models. Um, and so I've actually, um, I've got another model that looks a little better, uh, ready to go. Um, so I think I'll grab that, um. But uh, essentially, you you select edges that you want and cut them. Um, but anyway, uh, we have these sort of two components of material. We have the shader, which determines how it looks. And then we have the texture, which is a 2D image um, that'll specify things like color, etc. We're only going to just do the color right now um, for, for time constraints. Um, and so there's this thing in 3D modeling called UV mapping. Um, and UV mapping is how you take a flat texture and put it on a 3D model. Um, so you go from the texture coordinates of your image, which is 2D, to your, your 3D thing. Um, and so you do this thing when you're texturing models called UV unwrapping. Um, and it's, it's the same thing as that, um, but just a little more sophisticated. Um, and so here, here's my VR chat model's UV map. Um, if you've ever like worked with like plush stuff, if you've ever seen like a plushie, um, this is essentially like the flat parts that you would like cut out to make a plushie essentially. Um, except we're sort of working in reverse. We're like cutting our model into the, into its like sewn together parts. Um, so yes. Um, so I'm going to, uh, open up blender here, uh, and real quick do texturing. I, I may not, not have time to get to rigging today. Um, we'll see, but, um, hopefully I can just give a real quick, uh, texturing is, is easy. Um, and rigging is, is fairly straightforward as well. So, um, I'm going to open up my, my model that I, I was working on here in a minute. So let me pull that up. Um, you'll see the model that I was working on looks a little bit, a little bit better. Um, so there we go. Um, so I've, I've already got this kind of ready to go. Um, but essentially what I've done is I've, I've gone into edge mode and I've, I've selected uh, all these edges here that I, I feel like is a good seam on my model here. 
So um, I, I've you're essentially just making plushy seams on your model. Basically, it's like if you're if this model were sewn together out of flat pieces of fabric, where would where would it be cut? Where would it be a good place for a seam? Um, so you just do all those seams, and so the way you do that is you'll you'll select an edge like that, and then you'll go to the edge, and you'll you'll find mark seam. And that'll just turn the edge red, or if you don't like it, you can do edge clear seam. Um, and so Blender has this these nice workflow tabs up at the top. Um, and so we've been kind of in modeling the whole time because we were we were modeling our model. Now that our model is modeled, we're going to go to UV editing. Um, and UV editing is where we make our UV map so that we can texture things. Um, and so I'm going to s hit A to select all parts of my model. Um, and I'm going to go to UV unwrap. Um, and since I've set my seams properly, I now have all these flat sort of cutout bits on my model uh, that'll nicely arrange themselves here. Um, and you can export this to a, a flat image if you want to. There's different things you can do with it. But essentially, this just gives Blender a nice way to, to color our model. Um, and so I'm going to make a new image here. I'm going to call it like cat text. Um, and this will be our base texture. So now that we're done with UV editing, we've got all our edges, our seams marked and we've hit unwrap. Um, we can go into the next tab over very nice workflow tabs here, texture paint. Um, we are now in texture paint mode. Um, so I'm going to open up our texture from earlier. You can open up files from your computer as well if you want to drag those in, if you got the files online or something. But um, I just have a brush here uh, and you can select, uh, I think you have to pull it out of there. Yes, you can select your, your color here. So we're going to, I think we'll just make it kind of a nice gray color. Um, and you can draw either here or here on your model. Um, but one thing I have to do really quick is I actually have to assign this texture uh, to the um, to the model. Uh, and so I have to give it a material first. So I have to give it a new material. This is the material button. Um, and as I mentioned before, the textures can be used to color all sorts of things or to control anything in your shader. Um, but all we're going to worry about is color, as I said today. So we're going to um, we're going to select this little button here that controls the color, and we're going to find our image texture, um, and we're going to do the, the image browser here and find our cat texture. So here it is. Um, so yes, we uh, we're ready to texture paint, um, and so I'm just going to quickly color in my whole. Uh, Turn the brush size up a little bit. If you ever work with like Photoshop or Clip Studio or anything like this, this is should be fairly familiar to you. But um, yeah, just color it in, um, and then turn my brush size down a little bit, make it a little bit lighter. I can actually paint right on the model like that. If I'm in texture paint mode. And so now that I've got my image opened up, it's a, it's got a material added, texture assigned to the color. Uh, we're good to go. So I can just do like a light belly and stuff like that. Um, so bring up the neck. Maybe we'll make the face like sort of light colored. Um, we'll do the little the little light colored butt there. Um, again, very simple. Uh, not not sophisticated at all. Um, Oh, how do you change the grid color so that it can be seen? Are you talking about the uh, like these the UV grid here? Um, so that's actually dependent um, on what you have selected. I think um, I don't typically worry about it. it's it's a little bit lighter uh, color here. I think it's going to be it, it may be somewhere in the view uh, settings. Um, I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I can I can get back to you on that. So, uh, I think it's only a problem because I'm using a very light gray color for things. If it was darker, they they should they would be much easier to see. Um, 
but off the top of my head, I don't, I don't remember how to do that, but I will, um, yeah, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Um, but yeah, so we, this is texture painting. And so if you were doing this for like a VR chat model or something, you would just bring in your image and you would like, you would import your model in and you would assign it, you would make a material, you'd be like new material, and then you would go to color image texture. Um, and so I can, I can go in here and I can like save as this image. Um, so that's just kind of a brief overview of texturing, um, just a sense of what you can do with it in Blender. Um, but it's doing this is much easier than trying to paint on these flat images that you get. Um, so yeah, and then uh, we're, I know we're, we're uh, running out of time here, but I did want to talk just a little bit briefly about rigging. Um, so rigging is sort of the last step in getting this model ready to go. Um, so rigging is basically just giving your model a skeleton. Um, and it's, uh, it has its roots or its history in the wire armatures that people would use to do like clay, uh, stop motion animation. Um, and so, yeah, as you see the, the armatures that people make, uh, for 3d models, um, yeah. So uh, up to this point, yeah, for retexture and unity, should I use the bump map or the PNG? Um, I'm not exactly sure what you mean. Because bump, bump map, what a bump map is, is uh, it's, it's like shows surface roughness and things. Um, the bump map is, is, is just going to show surface details and things. It's going to be its own separate texture. Um, that affects how makes something look bumpy, basically. Um, but I, I assume you would be talking about the color texture, um, which is what you would edit, yeah. Um, so yeah, we got five minutes here. So real quickly, just uh, I'll, I'll talk about rigging. Um, so I'm going to add uh, an armature here in my model. So I'm going to go to add armature single bone um, and then I can go into edit mode just like I can a a, a model um, and so I can use I can actually use G and extrude and things just like before um, so uh, if I go to viewport display here uh, I think it's visibility somewhere around here there's there's uh, there's a way to, to make your bones visible through your mesh but I'll just go to wireframe um, and so essentially what we'll do is we'll give them like a spine bone, um, like that, essentially just like that armature I showed, then we'll hit E for extrude, extrude up like that, give them a backbone, you know, give them a neck bone, head bone, um, like that, thigh bone. Extrude down. Extrude. So essentially you're just giving your avatar a little earlier, your model a little skeleton there. Um, and uh, what you can do is, I, I, I probably don't have to do that now, but what you can do is you, you can actually go through and rename all of these bones here. Um, so you'll, if you go to the bone thing, each bone will have its sort of name here. Um, and if I put like a uh, dot L there, if I do that to all of these, and then I go to uh, armature uh, symmetrize, that'll flip everything over. Um, so we'll just pretend we have our armature ready to go. Um, and so if we had all the, the fingers and the arm bones and everything done out, um, you can look up, there's there's standard armature sort of shapes for, for different characters, but um, if we had our armature symmetrized over, uh, the next step would be to select our model and then our armature, and then hit Control P for parent. Um, and if you, there's a special thing that'll happen where if you do this with a model and an armature, um, it'll that's actually how you take the mesh and you put it on the armature essentially. And so I'm gonna hit I'm just going to use with automatic weights. Um, and so if I go back in here, 
um, bring it into pose mode. See, it's it's moving. It's automatically got the bones to where my character moves like that. So you can pose it in all these ways. So it's rigging in Blender is like you just you just extrude out these bones, extrude, 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 control P, and you're like good to go. So yeah, this was I know this was a, a whirlwind tour of uh, Blender. Um, perhaps next time I teach this, I won't try to cover so many topics in such a short period of time. Maybe make it like a two-hour panel. Um, but hopefully this kind of shows you what it looks like when you're starting out 3D modeling, um, gives you some useful hotkeys and things. Um, so yes, and so if uh, this, if you can get down the modeling, the texturing and the rigging, that, that's actually everything you need to make a VR chat avatar. And then you can just pull that into Unity. Um, so yeah, um, we finished our rigging demo. So yeah. Um, Hopefully you learned a, a little something. Um, hopefully you'll learn a little more if you can go back and watch the recording of it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this is my uh, my intro to, to 3D modeling uh, panel. Thank you so uh, thank you guys so much for uh, coming out. This is my my first ever panel. So uh, yep, appreciate it so much.